Borjan, you started RJR Labs to incubate new companies, leveraging all your startup experience. What's sort of your investment thesis and how are you looking at building new companies? Well, I moved back to, to Canada uh, about 18 months ago. I was in the US and then prior to that, I was in the UK. And the thesis behind RJR was really about uh, investing in e-commerce and building e-commerce companies in Canada um, and doing them at scale, which, uh, which really hadn't been done before. It's hard to get companies to scale in Canada, so there's always this talk about a shortage of talent. How do you solve that problem? Well, no, that's absolutely it. Uh, for us, uh, it's, it's, e-commerce was lacking a few things. The postal system needed deep development. There was a lack of talent in here, in Canada, that had really spent time looking at e-commerce and disruption in e-commerce. And then there was also the issue of capital. And so uh, we brought in uh, some strong entrepreneurs from international, and it's also been about developing talent here uh, that wants to stay here and develop e-commerce in, in Canada as well. Well, in the STEM education system, we're constantly, as fellow founders, constantly trying to have universities improve it. Do you think that we've got the capacity for Canada in the next decade uh, to really meet the demand? I absolutely think so. I think it's really about uh, thinking a certain way. After spending time you know, outside the country and then moving back, you see uh, that e-commerce is such a fast-changing pace and space yeah. that we need to continue to develop you know, our entrepreneurs in a way that think with the ever-changing development in this world and, and the speed that we have. You've had some experience raising money for a public company. You're co-founder at Groupon. That's right. Tell us about that experience, the roadshow, and how you went through that, how you raised that capital. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, I think we did uh, 70 meetings in three days uh, on a roadshow in five different cities. Um, and it was actually, I think, the first time I'd ever been on a private plane. And it was the most uncool experience in the world. Because uh, it was just nonstop. It was just nonstop. And... Um, you know, building a public company, you know, Groupon at the time was the largest tech IPO outside of Google. Um, and so there was a lot of pressure, um, a lot of eyes on us. Um, and it's, a, it's an entire different regulatory game. Um, it's a bit anticlimactic and the pressure really happens when you press the buzzer and you go public. The founders that are out there trying to raise capital, thinking about pre-IPO capital, were there any lessons learned that you would say when you're thinking about that pre-IPO round right before you go to do an IPO, uh, any lessons learned you can think of there? I think it's using that as facilitation capital. I think a lot of people celebrate capital. Uh, I think the, I, have, I have a golden rule that I don't show up to any celebratory uh, capital raises. I think when you raise capital, it, you're, you're taking on new responsibility um, and you've got new investors and you've got pressure and to really understand the responsibility you have with that capital um, as opposed to think you're close to the finish line. One of the companies you're incubating and you're starting to build is Endy and you're the executive chair there. What, what's the thesis on that one? Yeah, Endy is, um, I, I'm one that does believe in favorites. Endy is, is, is one of my favorite portfolio companies. Um, is the founder you love or? Yeah, so I, I started with a, a, actually a very good friend of mine that I went to high school with, Mike Geddes, who's our CEO. Um, and so be able to work with an old friend is, is, is very special. Uh, but what I really, truly love about the company is that it's, uh, it's been disrupting Canadian e-commerce at the highest level. I believe we're now the largest vertical e-commerce company in Canada. Um, and we've been able to achieve that in three years. Um, and to be able to build it at home with a Canadian made product um, and sell it and make it exclusively for Canadians is, is really exciting. It was the original thesis behind RJR and, and ND is, is the shining star behind it. So when you think about e-commerce and the future of e-commerce, is there going to be more vertical integration or is this really a platform play long term? How do you think about it? No, I believe it's it, vertical is going to be the space. I mean, it's very difficult to compete with the, the likes of Amazon in the world. Um, and so uh, there is a value in specialty retail. And if you can own a specific space of that, like Andy does in the mattress world or in the sporting good world or in the luggage world, spaces where you can really build brand uh, that resonates with Canadians, um, there's huge opportunity. And, and Canada is, um, as you know, far behind the rest of the world when it comes to, to e-commerce. You know, no uh, the average person is, um, you know, is spending a lot less online. Uh, we've we only did a 20 billion in 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 online retail in Canada last year. I mean, that number is set to to increase by 50 percent over the next few years. So a lot of that will come from specialty. And Canadians haven't aren't buying from Amazon per capita as much as they are in other markets. What is it that's unique about this market? It's it hasn't matured yet. I think it's taken some time 
for people to feel comfortable. Uh, the development is, is, is just a few years behind. We, we never really had the, the trust that the products that we were going to buy would come duty free. And I think Endy is a great example where you know you're buying it. It's in Canada. It's made in Canada. It's shipped from Canada. So you're building a level of trust with the consumer that when you buy a product, it's going to be shipped for free. There's not going to be any extra charges to it and it's going to be of high quality. Um, there are companies now that are starting to build that trust like Endy and I think that's going to be uh, the future of Canadian retail.